Why didn't you answer your phone? You're not going to believe what just... Sometimes it can be hard to tell the difference between the truth and a well-disguised lie. So as a way to let the truth shine through, here are more of the top 10 soda myths that are lies, part two. You can catch diseases drinking from the can. I'm inventing new diseases. Oh, great. How many times have you been told to rinse or wipe down your can of soda before drinking it? Or to not even put your mouth on the rim to use a straw or pour it in a glass instead? So much so that it's now probably become a habit. Well, this is all probably due to the myth of rats urinating on soda cans that is deeply anchored in your brain. Ah, rats! Before they are shipped, the soda is stored in a warehouse, and we all know that warehouses aren't the cleanest of places and are usually crawling with little rodents. So people took that info and turned it into something able to cause a general panic. I mean, let's face it, who would want to put their mouths on something rats might have relieved themselves on? Gross. That's disgusting. While experts have said that it is completely possible to get sick and contract an illness called leptospirosis if exposed to an infected rat's urine, it gets completely debunked when you look at the facts. As far as they know, it has never happened to anyone. Ever. Even the Center for Disease Control says they have yet to come across a legitimate story of an infection caused by rats and soda cans. Soda can dissolve human teeth. You haven't seen any teeth around here, have you? Teeth? Yeah, my teeth! Uh. At some point or another, you've probably been told that if you drink too much soda, it could dissolve all your teeth. And you probably believed it. This popular thought comes mostly from the classic science experiment most of us did in elementary school. You would need to test out the acidity of multiple liquids, like water, juice, and soda, by dropping a piece of organic matter in each cup. Yes, science! This is where the irrational fear began to set in. Even though, yes, sodas like Coca-Cola do contain a lot of ingredients like citric acid, acid and phosphoric acid, there just aren't enough to be considered harmful and are perfectly safe to consume. A 1950 study from Cornell University also tried to link soda with cavities, but it wasn't as fruitful as they had hoped. There just isn't any direct link between a can of soda and dissolving teeth. So all of it was a lie? Well, yeah. No way. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it all was a lie. The only thing you should be somewhat wary of is the fact that soda can be used to remove stains or clean pennies. Other than that, your teeth shouldn't fear it, and neither should you. Sodas made with real sugars are healthier. I'm not about to eat real sugar. The fact that sodas are full of sugar shouldn't be surprising. It's a pretty well-known fact, and people are usually aware of just how much they ingest when they drink it. So basically, there is no such thing as healthy sodas. No matter what kind of sugar you put in it, sugar is sugar, and consuming a lot can be harmful. With that being said, there are worse sweeteners, like high fructose corn syrup, that are found in some sodas. Everything here is made with corn syrup! Just drink the corn syrup! So while it is true that sodas made with real sugar are somewhat more natural, our bodies process sugar and corn syrup exactly the same way meaning it does not equate to any health benefits. At the end of the day, soda isn't healthy, no matter what you put in it. And for those zero-sugar sodas, don't think you're out of the woods just yet. No, I don't drink. This is just Coke Zero. There might not be sugar in it, but there's something that can potentially cause just as much, if not more, damage than sugar. Aspartame. Aspartame is a sweetener that has been associated with some health issues, so it doesn't make that diet soda any healthier. If you really want a healthy beverage, skip the soda altogether. Soda is easy to quit. I could quit whenever I want. I just don't want to. Having a soda addiction doesn't even sound like a real thing. You want to cut back on your soda habit? Easy, just don't buy it and replace it with something else instead. Or at least, that's how easy people think it is to stop yourself from ordering that giant soda. Just like a good cup of coffee, according to Ohio State University neuroscientist Gary Wink, soda can be very hard to say no to. One drink and then we go. One drink. Soda has the perfect amount of caffeine, carbon 
combination and sweetener to trigger the release of dopamine in the brain. He explains that as the sugar swishes through your body, the dopamine release hits you until the effect wears off, which is almost as fast as it came. This leaves your brain wanting more and more, the perfect recipe for addiction, or at least dependency. Soda addiction is usually characterized by strong cravings, a preoccupation with your next soda break, and difficulty reaching for another beverage option, even if you know you shouldn't have another can. How many of those have you had? I don't know. I stopped counting. I hear my heartbeat. Do you hear my heartbeat? Some people have fallen so deep into the cycle that they need to seek professional help to get out of it. So next time someone tells you they're trying to quit soda, don't dismiss them. It's actually way harder than it looks. Coca-Cola invented Santa Claus. Santa invented Coca-Cola and aerobics. Everybody has seen that one super cute Coca-Cola commercial with the polar bears around the holiday season, or even the one featuring Santa Claus with a bottle of Coke. For almost a century now, this advertising campaign has been going strong. Santa has promoted the iconic beverage since the 1930s. In a way, it's as if Coca-Cola had become the official sponsor of Christmas. Nothing but a bunch of sleazy con men in red suits. What did you call us? After all, they both share the same red and white aesthetic, so it's not that silly to consider. Ever since the commercials first came out, the idea that Coca-Cola created Santa Claus's signature look began spreading, and it soon became a fact. However, as much as we would like to believe it, it doesn't make any sense when you look at the history. The classic image of Santa Claus we all know, the white-bearded man dressed in in red stretches as far back as the 18th century. Plus, the jolly man in red has been part of popular culture since the 1800s. So no, Coca-Cola is not responsible for inventing Santa Claus's impeccable style. Nonetheless, the soda brand did contribute to shaping the old man's image in its ads. So the myth isn't all false, all things considered. There's pork in your Coke. Isn't there anything here that doesn't have meat in it? Possibly the meatloaf. With so much gossip, rumor, and he said, she said going around on the internet, it can sometimes be hard to tell the truth from the hoaxes, especially when it comes to what exactly is in your precious can of Coke. A couple of years ago, a rumor blew up online that there is pork extract in your Coke. People, especially vegans and vegetarians, started freaking out and were quick to seek answers to the worrying news. Since it's the internet, very little is usually done when it comes to background checks and jumping to premature conclusions seems to be a huge trend. You guys are really jumping to conclusions here. When word got back to Coca-Cola, the company's representatives started releasing multiple statements denying the rumor, assuring their customers that absolutely no meat products were used in any of their products. And while this information is very true, the false information has yet to die down, and it is still believed by many today. Coca-Cola wasn't the only target of that rumor. Almost instantly, Pepsi and almost every other major soft drink company was under fire as well. Can't trust anyone. Even if almost all sodas are 100% vegan friendly, there are still some people out there sticking to their guns and not admitting they freaked out over nothing. It can cause depression. And it's actually making me a little depressed, which is then in turn making me more depressed that you're actually affecting my mood. Sometimes when things are taken out of context, they can grow out of proportion to become a total lie that everybody believes just because it sounds legit. Proof of this is a study that was done by the National Institutes of Health and made headlines in 2013. The study found that drinking soda could be associated with a higher risk of depression. People took this information and went in a completely different direction, saying that soda caused depression. Whoa, whoa, you twisted my words there. The rumor spread like wildfire, and soon enough, everybody believed soda was the cause of mental illness. But an NYU professor of nutrition, Dr. Elisa Young, tried to smother the fire. She said that the problem with drinking soda didn't come from the soda itself, but from what we usually eat when we drink it. People tend to drink soda when they eat junk food, meaning they're not getting 
enough fiber and protein to go with all the sugar, and unstable blood sugar could throw off your mood. She also pointed out that there's a huge difference between saying the chemicals in soda cause changes in the brain that result in depression and people who suffer from depression tend to prefer the dopamine rush of a sugary soda. Basically, you won't get depressed if you drink soda. It was just another rumor that ended up becoming a fake, common scientific fact. You need to tap the can before drinking it. Just tap it in. Give it a little tappy. Tap, tap, tap a room. Show of hands, how many times has a friend or sibling handed you a can of freshly shaken soda and thought it was the most hilarious thing in the world? And we're also probably all guilty of doing it ourselves at least once. The one trick we were taught as a way to dodge this sneaky ambush was to just tap the can to keep it from foaming over and creating a big mess. While this sounds like the perfect solution to a goofy situation, it is completely false. Wrong, 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 wrong. Wrong, 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 wrong. Live science has even come forward to say that by tapping a can, you're not breaking the bubbles at all. In fact, you're most likely making things worse by adding even more movements and creating even more bubbles inside the can, which increases the chance of it foaming like crazy when you open it. The best way to save yourself from embarrassment and a change of clothing? Just let it sit for a while. The bubbles will settle down and burst, and the can will be safe for consumption once again. If you're really in dire need of a soda and want one ASAP, you can always try to put it in the freezer to speed up the process a bit. The temperature change will help quicken things, but unless you want to give the culprit the satisfaction, you still need to wait for a little. Pop Rocks, Mentos, and soda can kill you. You can't feed candy to birds, their stomachs will explode. Even if it's just a few Pop Rocks? Okay, we've probably all heard the story of Life Cereal's Little Mikey, the fictional boy played by John Gilchrist in commercials from the 1970s. The urban myth said that the actor was a victim of a Pop Rocks and Coca-Cola tragedy and had passed away. Mikey who? That kid from the cereal commercial? He died of Pop Rocks. This rumor circulated for quite a while, saying that the two combined products produced an overabundance of carbon dioxide and his stomach exploded. Well, the actor is still alive and well today, so needless to say, this was completely bogus. I'm alive! I'm alive! The panic, however, was very real. The FDA even had to set up a telephone hotline for worried parents, calling to see if their kids were in danger if they simply ate the candy. Even after decades of General Mills trying to defuse this myth, including printing full-page ads in the paper, it just doesn't seem to want to go away. Another popular candy that has been associated with exploding stomachs is Mentos. Numerous online videos of people dropping Mentos candy into their bottle of sodas have gone viral over the years. Because because of the extreme physical reaction, a rumor started going around that anyone who drank soda after eating Mentos would see their stomachs explode. While this is also completely false, it might cause some serious indigestion and discomfort, so maybe it's not the best trick to try at home. One thing is for sure, though, no stomachs will be exploding. Cocaine in your Coca-Cola. What's in this stuff anyway? Black strap and whatever else I can find for an added kick. Cocaine? Okay. While it is true that cocaine did play an integral role in flavoring Coca-Cola back in the day, that has long since changed. Well before the drug was made illegal by the U.S. government in 1914, you could find some traces of it in your glass of Coke. That was back when the health hazards hadn't been discovered yet. People thought it was safe to use in small amounts, and cocaine was actually a pretty common ingredient in medicines. Caffeine is the only high I need. That and cocaine. Yeah! The name Coca-Cola derives from the soda's two original ingredients, the cola nut and, well, cocaine, which comes from coca leaves. However, the recipe officially changed in 1903 when they began using spent coca leaves, which had a very small amount of active substance left in them. It took some time, but by 1929, all traces of cocaine had disappeared from Coca-Cola, and it became a regular run-of-the-mill soft 
soft drink. Today, the iconic addictive flavor mostly comes from cocaine-free coca leaf extracts, which are prepared in Mayfield, New Jersey, at the only factory legally able to process the drug in the United States. So not to worry, Coke doesn't have any Coke in it. Because it's been such a huge part of Coca-Cola history, some people still believe that there are traces of it in today's bottles. But the truth is, it's a long gone. Goodbye, old friend. Grab another sip and tap or click on one of our other great videos. Click that subscribe button and ring that notification bell.